Welcome everyone to another breaking news. Yesterday I briefly mentioned the upcoming Linux kernel 6.1 with major advancements in algorithms and uh, data structures, namely Maple Tree as well as multi-generational last recently used MRLRGU. And today it was released and the results are amazing. I already the other day mentioned compiling the Linux kernel. Um, I get 1.5 or so percent faster compile times. But today I tested the final release here also with Geekbench of all things, which I use here for my epic thread wrapping, overclocking and undervolting testing and stuff. And so I have a good score to compare. And wow, um, what the heck, the score went so previously, when I unbox this X670E Ryzen 7950X. And so initially I got like 23,000. So with overclocking the heck and under vaulting and, and, and stuff, I got at the edge of stability 25,000 plus minus give or take, but now just upgrading the kernel, right? So it went from usually barely 25,000 to 25,921. So basically kind of 900 points here of, of multi-core score, and that is totally unexpected, right? Because that is mostly CPU bound, but it also shows that all the memory allocation and stuff, especially then multi-core with 32 threads, how much overhead is this, this translate? So, 20 from 20 around 25,000 to 25,900 is a free 3.5 percent performance improvement in such kind of mostly pure CPU benchmarking, and that is crazy, right? This is what usually you get from significant undervolting, overclocking, memory subtiming, and stuff. So, it's basically you buy the next. CPU skew or stuff or memory. So what else is new, right? I mentioned this the other day. Uh, we have here the fine kernel newbies. Uh, Linus Torvalds is not creating such a nice change list. Uh, their prominent features, initial support for Rust program, programming language. And we took a look at that in my More Life channel. I tested that for the Asai Linux and it's a little bit rough. So the initial support there, I, I would not put this actually at the first place. For me, multi-gen LRU and uh, Maple Tree. Huge improvements, right? The biggest performance uplift I had with Linux kernel probably forever, and some already call this the best Linux features of 2022. Initial Rust programming, as much as I love memory safety and type safety and stuff, it's the initial support. It's you have to be a very specific Rust version and Rust bind gen and stuff. And this initial support gives you nothing, right? This is pure. I understand it's a groundwork, it's the initial enablement, but it's nothing that gives you any value. Now, maybe in some years, um, Apple AGX, a side Linux GPU driver, which is not yet mainline. Anyway, so for me, this is like footnote initial Rust support, but anyway, maybe other Rust people will find this more amazing. As previously mentioned, Mightygen LRU, what this means is vast rework of the way Linux kernel can manage the memory, all the memory management, um, all the uh, what to be invicted with overcommitted memory caches and stuff. And this feature is not enabled by default. Some other Linux solution had this backported. I will, however, in our um, amazing just, oops, just T2, just no, T2 SDE, Linux, Linux solution, I will enable this by default. Let's see how many architectures uh, this will work in. Um, and yeah, page reclaim memory pressure and so on and this all this change logs make it sound like you only get this with massive servers massive memory over committing but no in my benchmark only 64 gigs of memory because i currently can't get something larger um, at least for reasonable quantities of monies so only 64 gigs of memory ryzen 750x 1.5 to 3.5 in linux kernel and geekbench Memory tearing improvements, that is only NUMA improvements, I think. Tearing down NUMA, I think, or something. BPF, uh, the recurring jitting there in the kernel. KM, ZAN kernel, memory sanitation, um, probably debug feature that is for 
tracking, finding uninitialized values. Um, lots of so, a lot of this stuff, and this is also maple trees, right? So for me, is, but this is also your mileage may vary. For me, it's 1.1 multi-gen LRU, 1.2 uh, maple trees. So what maple trees is just different tree structures in memory, how to um, manage containers, sync C++ STL, right? And the Linux kernel, yeah, B trees, um, red black trees, and now maple trees, um, just better. And that is also what shows just just like months or years of people putting work in their research, debugging, profiling, optimizing in-memory representation algorithms, um, yielding such memory improvements for free. Then all the other improvements, and there are hundreds, right? We can quickly scroll over that. Um, nothing that particularly newsworthy, probably uh, because it's just so much, right? There are with 10,000 developers, thousands of changes, Initial support for Rust, we had the C groups, dynamic debugging, uh, 45, the recurring high performance work of user space, IO Uring, zero copy, and non zero copy, send message and send to. Um, basically, if you're new to this stuff, new alternative high performance system call ring buffers that allow magnitudes higher throughput for method of. Uh, throughput sensitive server and such applications. Random non-block string, string term, yeah, whatever. Uh, the other big improvements, basically each Linux kernel release one of the major file system work in better FS, butter FS, BTR FS, whatever you want to pronounce that. LSEQ, file map, much more efficient, IO, Uring, async buffer writes, um, I/O completion cleanups, subtree dropping, and so on. Sifs, all the other stuff. Memory is, memory management is where the multi-gen LRU framework comes in. Maple tree, yeah, all this, all this commits. If you're new to the stuff, this is committed in dozens of small commits for bisecting and uh, better understanding of the changes. So instead of well, what other big mega corporations would do, just dumping one change in there, but if you're new to this stuff, there's also many commits because gradually, like initial enablement, uh, core algorithms, data structures, and so on, and then porting one subsystem and functions and, and, and the other. Kazan, KFENS, uh, following changes, um, MCONFB block layer, path through block optimizations, path through probably for like ATA and whatnot, path through of uh, direct. Um, storage commands to like NVMe uh, SRL ADA devices, BPF, uh, Berkeley packet filter, and so running JIT stuff like yeah, the modern, let's JIT just in time compiled Linux kernel, perf stuff. This is a little bit funny to me. I would prefer if this, especially this user space stuff tool, is separated for me. It's a little bit like yeah, why is this not like IP root, IP tables as a separate command, of course. Linux distributions package it as a separate command. Uh, yeah, it's not really core kernel. Tracing, virtualization, security, um, TCP, networking. Again, lots of tiny changes. Probably mostly, I, I wish they would like in bold list, but even for me, this is like small fixes, improvements here and there. Then of course, per architecture arm, the never ending device tree story. So of course, each kernel there are device tree changes. For me, it's a little bit silly that it's not in the firmware. In my opinion, they should, they should be perfect, like Apple and Spark open firmware had back in the day. Uh, but 2022, we maintained that in the news kernel. That means MediaTek, TI, and Experian, and Qualcomm. Even the new, I think there was one actually new, um, was it Sony or stuff, just being sold, or maybe this was RM64. Anyway, device trees are here, Sony Xperia. Here you have that fairly recent phone if you wanted to run mainline on that. So lots of sock changes, improvements here and there, left and right, rock chip. RM64, MediaTek. Alternative mechanism improvement of switching different x86 ARM and similar of such different major implementations um, like sync, SMP, non SMP, and other such alternatives. AVX, 
scalable vector extensions, Neon, and so on, it's not, it's not of such alternatives. Um, yeah, the crazy complexity of in-kernel Berkeley packet filter jitting support of in-register struct arguments trampling programs. Um, 2022, you can never make a monolithic single address space kernel complex enough. IOMU MD generic IO page table framework. Lots of other platform. I'm not sure why the there's a platform type C switch driver sounds USB. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Mm. Surface, if you're running Linux on Surface, Microsoft Surface tablets and laptops. For me, this is a recurring annoyance that all those vendors, shame on you, Microsoft and all the other friends and family, implementing vendor specific stuff. I would really prefer that after 40 years of the PC and 20 or so years of more high performance and mobile, we would have in universal serial bus and Bluetooth, we would have come to a point where HID stuff would be truly generic like freaking keyboards and mice. For me, annoying that each and every company needs to work their strange proprietary stuff in there. But anyways, the Surface Laptop Go and stuff, there you have it. Also, recurring theme here of ASUS VWMI, that there is not a proper standard for, I think this is even Windows management interface or so, where this is sensors, like temperatures and stuff, like I said it before, I will probably make a dedicated video. Super annoying that there are proprietary pair render hex quirks and features. Why is there not, not the proper sensor management interface standard for x86 or ACPI? It is said, it is silly that people need to reverse engineer like me here live on this other channel and stuff. Each freaking new motherboard, Gigabyte ASUS X3, 4, 5, 670, yeah, the new starts, which IT and so on sensor has this render implemented this year around and yeah, anyway. There's that perf power cap KVM VMX support for the new EVM CS version one revision. Long arch of this Chinese if you happen to run this Chinese MIPS clone. Um, hey, they have no freaking ACPI in long arch, eh, BPF JIT, KXEC, such stuff. Risk five more amazing for those who run. Linux on their unmatched Risk Five desktop. Support for new um, set IC bombed gas. So, um, support for KVM Risk Five. Um, KVM amazing stuff. This is of course very few silicon out there. Probably prototype, right? But nonetheless, amazing that this is being prepared. Stuff like LightX from those FPGI, FPGA DIY stuff of LightX DIY MMC driver merged there. Um, yes, 390 mm. MIPS. And so, yeah, even crazy stuff 2022 Motorola 68K, KXIC on Classic with MMU enabled only. A little bit bug fix, but hey, 2022, wait, what? We have KXIC on. Motorola 68K, but yeah, there we have it. Microblaze, error injection. Um, yeah, drivers, MD, of course, this stuff is at times humongous. MD GPU, of course, usually hundreds of thousands of lines of code of new RDNA 2 or 3, it's such enablement. Intel, I think one is now enabled by default that previously wasn't, I think. Um, it's not even, not even mentioned there, but I believe there is now probably Intel Arc enabled by default. I think that was previously, as far as I remember, not enabled by default. Rodeon, um, this, all, this probably, sometimes it reads like something doesn't isn't supported anymore, but this means legacy MST multi-stream technology for multiple displays and daisy chaining on display port. However, that means legacy non-AMD display controller shared sources with Windows Driver, right? So the support is probably still there. This is just pre-display controller, open source, maybe partially reverse engineered or at least independently implemented. So it's a little bit sad to have this less complex code being dropped, but support is still there. Your mileage may vary. So yeah, lots of, as usual, panels and so on, power management, um, ACPI, Quirks, even 
what, why do we have here Apple GMRUX brightness control detection? Because previously was there, right? But anyway, anyway, details, bug fixes, um, new design, probably is, is this design there by Carl Sons, uh, Russian though. Anyway, NVMe, uh, rediscover, new event, when a persistent discovery controller reconnects. Interesting stuff. Um, networking is like, yeah, we, if we just read through this text forever, right? Um, it is amazing. I mean, sure, it, everything in the kitchen sink, um, everything is in one monitor kernel. So of course you have, as I mentioned, 10,000 of developers with 10,000 of changes. And um, as such, device drivers in one way, it is amazing and what we always wanted in open source, having one repository to maintain all this service in an amazing working state. On the other, it is of course overwhelming when you read and read all those changes like, sure, everything improved a little bit. So only constant change, sometimes regressions. Network stuff, right? Previous video about just right here, Intel. Um, I think they even had changes there, Intel somewhere. IGC, hey, XDP, frag support for my fright and unbricked previous video. Uh, real tech, it's like basically everything, a little bit Wi Fi. Um, as much changes as they are, however, I should test. I have a Surface Pro 3 from probably soon, a decade ago, and that never had fixed as I think 9K, 6K, 10K, whatever, Ethan, uh, Atheros, Marvel or so chip was in there, so this was always buggy with the Linux kernel and you had to disable auto suspend, right? This is uh, stuff I probably even had reported that. I even, I remember I had some email exchange with some developer, was it Marvel or whoever brought that. Um, this is the set stuff, as amazing as it always takes, like eventually we have everything fixed and you still have like a Microsoft Surface Pro 3 tablet that you need to manually disable auto suspend, otherwise the first time this Wi-Fi thing auto suspends with low throughput like after a minute or five and um, then your Wi-Fi doesn't um, auto resume from USB suspensors which is a little bit silly even though you have reported that and the people are aware of that it's like yeah, you know whatever not my department sound changes um, it's funny that after like a decade this Intel HDA still new Intel reference SSID to support headset keys um, but yeah there's always with the complexity of modern systems there's always one more reference headset key thing to add. USB audio, DSD support, which of course, and, and this is also crazy fe features, right? Do you even know what this is? DSD is digital, uh, direct stream digital, another alternative form that is not pulse coded, uh, PCM, pulse coded, modu pulse code modulation. Um, it's like, it is however amazing that people reverse engineer and patch that but yeah, not only very specific hardware, like how do you feel high-res hardware? Um, you also need your user mode code, like a high-res player to even probably switch that to stream direct, stream digital. Anyway, ASOC, lots of changes for all those embedded boards. Tablet touch, of course, as I mentioned, N2022 people still work on TV tuners, webcams, video captures. Um, I wonder, I probably should test, do I have, I have actually, um, it's like, yeah, USB, this Elgato Camlink worked a treat, usually, the last two years or so, live here on this channel, and with the latest, like, it worked stable, right, like, like, next to nothing to complain, and now with the AMD AM5X670, it works, but only once, like, if I live stream and then quit OBS and start it again, it doesn't work anymore, so, it's like, yeah, whatever bug that is. So this is where the only constant is change and, and fixes is like, yeah, even for stuff that supposedly worked for a decade, eventually whatever needs some X670 USB platform or, yeah, probably I should check if that works now reliable again. Universal server bus, what most people don't realize, some of the stuff like maybe even DWC3 or so might even affect Apple, Asai Linux, Apple Silicon, um, because Apple is also using such design their controllers and here they even write 
subsystem Alder Lake P apparently. So previously only specific server boards are embedded and nowadays Apple Silicon and Intel Alder Lake P. So yeah, lots of changes, even apparently serial FTD at support for new devices, SPI watchdog serial CPU frequency scaling. Although unfortunately AMD P state stuff still not updated there, pin control, multimedia. And this is also for those new to the stuff, how many components, drivers, industrial IO, but also memory technology, MTD, multimedia card for all those different storage technologies from SD cards to other block, MTD block storages, multifunction devices, inter, like basically also I2C, I3C, even motherboards. What also, this, this is by the way, that you heard and learned something new. New motherboards, like basically all DDR5 is probably now i3C. I could not even get that to work yet. I wanted to read the memory temperature on my epic thread ripping Ryzen 7950X and I couldn't get that to work, but previously worked right, but yeah, DDR5, new standards, it now switched from I2C to I3C and yeah, still yeah, new. I wonder if Intel and AMD eventually want to contribute changes for the making this to work on the PC platform or if we need to reverse engineer that. It's like, yeah, yeah. what is it, CPU set or HW in front Windows and the BIOS can display that, but yeah. for Linux we need to reverse engineer that ourselves. By the way, that you also learn something new, there is a Corsair piece user HXI series that have USB connected Power readings, which is, of course, normal users don't need, but actually I'm considering getting one for benchmarking, right? This is, of course, normal users don't need that, but for us, benchmarking stuff and so on. Leave in the comments below, but probably one of the few, if not only, PSUs, PC PSUs with direct integrated power readings, which actually can be amazing, but it's out of stock in most stores in Europe right now, so yeah, you might remember it. DMA engines for direct memory isolated embedded stuff, mostly PCI, hey, there is new PCI stuff. Thunderbolt, yeah, this is certainly all the stuff. Touchy modern dongle based plug and play stuff that's like usually works on boot or if you plug it in once of stuff, which is why it needs constant patches and improvements. Clocks, physical layer, various there you have it. Um, I rushed extremely fast through it. I still try to find a proper format for that, but hey, only 20 minutes. That's probably enough. Um, it probably doesn't make sense to go into more details. I, of course, do not know the changes for all those small little details. Just wanted to give you an overview and live commentary. I hope you enjoyed this and learned something, especially the performance benefits. And this is only the minimum, right? One to one and a half to three and a half percent is just the minimum of what I can or normal benchmarks find here. You might have micro benchmarks and pathological cases that can easily even be 10 or in their testing and micro benchmarks 30, 40, if not 50 or 60 percent. But that's of course crazy pathological cases of micro benchmarks. But it is for me unexpected that normal use cases can see such high performance. And I certainly happily take it here for my embarrassingly parallel Linux compilation needs here, running whole Linux distribution for 25 years and uh, compiling everything in now less than two hours, which is amazing with all the feature creep and bloat from the Linux kernel, GCC, Firefox, LVM, Clang, that I, with the help of AMD Ryzen 750X DDR5 memory and not only my undervolting and overclocking, but such kind of data structure changes squeeze the compile time of a minimal desktop system with all of that mentioned, including Firefox, compiling everything, bootstrapping, cross-compiling from scratch in just a little below two hours, which is amazing. Let's quickly check at the comments here. Rust in the kernel worries me probably um, found it for me to be worried, but um, yeah, it's kinder. I mean, Rust is more memory safe and stuff. The only thing is even I could not with my state-of-the-art and latest Rust toolchain, get it to just compile. Um, and some implementation details, like you need a source copy of some Rust core standard 
Um, Crates is, in my opinion, not amazing. I would hope they improve that in the future because otherwise it might be a little bit annoying to keep working. So the only thing that worries me, I mean, in, in general, it is um, more memory safety and stuff is amazing. The only thing that worries me is long-term stability of keeping that compiling. Wor it worries me a little bit, not only having the sources of standard alloc and stuff, I would hope that maybe it would be better to create some clone copy or recreate some standard set of alloc and standard create micro dependency stuff inside the kernel, not to rely on external dependencies. The bigger worry is that this gets out of Zinc and the Linux kernel, like the Rust developers often change some details that that breaks and also Rust bind generation just, I mean, it's just in the Linux kernel and Rust bind generation already changed some command and arguments. So with my life, more live channel, right? Just MPC or so, C, people just broke compiling GCC because super travel include stuff of not including standard IO header in their uh, MPC, I think, header. And it's similar, unnecessary, right, of breaking just when the basic support is added to the Linux kernel and then breaking Rust by and gen with changing command line arguments. It's like, poof, you, why, you had, you had like one job, but anyway. Um, Nvidia is still sitting on the of the food with focus almost exclusively on proprietary drivers. Industry would further along with all Nvidia. Yeah, I totally agree. Proprietary core stuff is unacceptable. Like GPU, especially, I mean, there is nothing like publishing and recurring theme on my channel right to repair, right to write your own software, and right to fix your even firmware. Right? Previous video, the Intel NIC bricks itself, either by itself or by broken BIOS by instead of the BIOS update and then you don't even have the tools EE Intel EE or flash update whatever 64E the name was and even the firmware download you either don't have it or you only find it by pure chance on hacker cracker hack into forums and other such leaked embedded or company leaked archives and um, it is a disgrace not only for not providing firmware to reflash yourself or not having weeks of RMA time. And also if it's out of warranty, then you, you get a BIOS update, either it bricks itself or a BIOS update, and then it's out of warranty and then you don't even have the tools. So yeah, um, and um, they're coming, comment hyped about 6.1 kernel good for LTS. Yeah, that is certainly amazing that that is an LTS kernel that's just the first release. Um, it would be pity if that would have been an LTS long-term support kernel without this amazing refactoring of core memory management algorithms and data structures that are uh, multi-generational LRU as well as maple trees. So from that point, it is certainly twice as amazing having just that with that new as an LTS kernel. Um, and another common P state stuff will be good for 6.3. Th uh, I mean, I couldn't care less. I, of course, we are professionals. So, unlike Intel's Linux kernel maintainers blocking AMD's P state driver, which I find hilarious, but of course, nothing preventing professional Linux distributions like T2 for already shipping that for improved energy efficiency and performance, right? Or it's like, yeah, maybe just use T2 just working high performance and cross compile to all architectures, Linux for latest and greatest performance features. And I hope you learned something, find this amazing. Leave in the comments below what you think. Don't forget to share and subscribe and I hope to see you soon for the next fun stuff to come.